I just spent the last few hours putting together a prediction video for Cannoneer and Vittori, and as soon as I started uploading it onto YouTube, I checked my phone and saw that there were some massive fights that have just been announced. And I was like, shit, I got to just make a video right now. I'll upload my prediction video tomorrow. Umar Nurmagomedov and Corey Sanhagen are going to be fighting in a main event on August 5th. Cyril Gaon is back with the perfect matchup. I wanted to see him tested against a grappler because he'll be taking on Sergei Spivak. And Max Holloway is getting a free win over the old washed up version of Korean Zombie. Yay, it's going to be a retirement fight where we get to see a guy that already has way too much brain damage take shit loads of more brain damage. Wow, how beautiful for the Korean Zombie. Amazing. This is going to make, you know, everyone shed a tear to see this guy get beat to a fucking pulp. You know, but nonetheless, it's still a big fight. But I want to talk about that first now that I'm on the subject. Wow, amazing, beautiful retirement fight. They're going to give this guy, you know, some Hawaiian flowers to put around his neck. I know it's in Singapore, which is pretty dope. And it's awesome that he's going to go out in his hometown. But I just find it funny. Again, we're talking about a retirement fight here. And this dude is going to be completely outclassed against Max Holloway. Like the last time Max Holloway fought way down in competition, we saw what he did to Calvin Cater. He completely destroyed him. And the version of the Korean zombie that we have today isn't even on the level that Calvin Cater was on in 2021. I mean, we saw what Volkanovski did to him, and I know Volk is on a different level, but look at what Max has been able to prove to a lot of other contenders uh, the same way Volk's been able to prove that shit. So I'm just saying to you guys, it's going to be a vile, vile way to send a man out of his career. You know, thank you so much for all that you've done. And we're going to put you up against... Max Holloway, the guy that completely destroys everyone other than Volkanovsky. Now, I, I, I'm exaggerating a little bit when I say he completely destroys everyone other than Volkanovsky. He had a close fight with Arnold Allen. He had a, a very close fight with Yaya Rodriguez. Now, to be fair, Max Holloway at this point in his career is a different guy. He takes less damage and he dishes out a little bit less punishment. Now, of course, I'm judging that only off of his last fight. But ever since the Volkanovsky and Yair fight... He looked completely different against uh, Arnold Allen. Like he, he was really defensively minded. And because of that, he's not throwing at the same clip. You know what I mean? Obviously, the reason why Max Holloway has the most strikes absorbed in UFC history is because he lands at such a high clip. And that's why he has the most significant strikes landed in UFC history. But now that he's fighting a little bit more defensively sound, maybe he won't land 600 significant strikes on the face of Korean Zombie. Maybe he'll only land 300. But nonetheless, it's a free win. If you're picking the Korean zombie, then you have to bank on him being the first guy to break the chin of Max Holloway because his only way to win this is by a KO. On to the next one, Cyril Gaon and Sergei Spivak. Listen, this is the perfect matchup. I did not want to see Gaon in a striking battle. I need to see him tested against another grappler. Now, one thing that I need to get out of the way is that getting taken down by John Jones, the greatest fighter that ever lived, that has just been out of the cage for three years, doing nothing but getting ready to take down a much bigger man in Francis Ngannou, is not that shameful. Like, I picked Gon to beat Jones, and I know it was a bad pick, but nonetheless, Jones has the light heavyweight speed, the light heavyweight finesse when it comes to his grappling, and he's able to slip a punch of Cyril Gon in a beautiful fashion to be able to take him down and submit him. Sergey Spivak, to be fair, I think is one of the more dangerous guys in the heavyweight division, uh, based on what he's able to do with his takedowns. We saw how quickly he was able to finish off Derek Lewis, and we, we've seen him just maul people on the ground as well. But in order to, for him to pin Gon down and actually get his hands on Cyril Gon, that's going to be a lot harder than what John Jones had to go through to get to Gon. Jones had him in a minute, you know, had him down, had him out of there within a couple minutes. Sergei Spivak is really going to have to work hard for that takedown. And... Gon is still elusive. You know, he moves around like a cat. He's very light on his feet and he is athletic, but he's training in France, still in the MMA factory, bro. This is a terrible move from him. I don't know what he's doing, but he needs to leave France now. He needs to go to the USA and train with John Jones, train with the guy that just embarrassed you in front of the world. You're never going to fight him again. You don't deserve to fight him again, but you may as well learn from him a little bit. And I'm sure John Jones would appreciate getting some rounds in on the feet against a guy like Gon. You know what I mean? To get ready for an old man, Stipe Miocic. But I just can't take Gon that seriously 
the longer he decides to stay in France because it's just been proven to be a terrible gym. Okay, we saw the adjustments Francis Ngannou made and the leaps and bounds of improvements he had with his takedown defense when he left France and went to coach Eric Nixon to train in Vegas. And Gon needs to do the same thing. So at the end of the day, I don't think his grappling is going to improve that much, but I do think we'll be seeing levels between John Jones's grappling and some of these other fat heavyweights grappling. Now, to be fair, Spivak is a young guy. He's a really tall heavyweight. He's not just like a fat Parker Porter kind of heavyweight, but nonetheless, we're talking about a heavyweight grappler. And I could see him winning. Who am I going to pick in this fight? Early prediction. Dude, I'm going to go with Gon. I am going to go with Gon. I think there is going to be a level between Sergey Spivak and John Jones. The only grappler that I would pick to beat Gon outside of John Jones in the heavyweight division. There's actually a couple of them. One is Jilton Almeida. I would 100% pick him to beat Gon. And the other is Tom Aspinall. Sergey Spivak, I just don't think he's going to have the quickness and the agility needed to pin Gon down that early. And I think Gon could fuck him up on the feet. I really do. So it's still a close fight. It's just how it's going to be with Gon and grapplers. If he's training in France, it's going to be a, a risky, stressful fight every time for us fans. So on to the next one, though. Umar Nurmagomedov and Corey Sanhagen. I love the matchup, bro. I don't even give a fuck if it's a big step up in competition and uh, Umar doesn't deserve it. Who cares? I just can't wait to see it because here's the thing. If Sanhagen cannot beat Umar Nurmagomedov, a guy that his best win is Rowney Barcelos, then I'm sorry, you don't even deserve a title shot. And I understand. It's like you're giving these guys like Nurmagomedov uh, too much privilege. I get it. I understand why people would be upset at this. But at the same time, if Sanhagen does beat him, okay, that's still a big statement because there's no mystery as to why this Umar Nurmagomedov guy is getting a lot of hype. He's a freak on the feet. The guy's a specimen. Okay, he's the best Nurmagomedov striker that we've ever seen. You know what I mean? He, he's a freak of nature. The way that he's able to kick people in the face with a lead front kick is insane, bro. He's extremely fast. He's powerful. He's explosive. And he can grapple. I mean, he's like got a 100% finish rate in the UFC so far, split down the middle between submissions and KOs and finishes. So I think that Umar has a decent chance, but I'm not going to pick him because Sanhagen has just spent the last few years making sure that he's never embarrassed on the ground again like he was against Aljamain Sterling. And I trust in Sanhagen's ability to improve. Uh, he's gotten a lot better throughout his career, and he just showed a bit of an ability to offensively grapple against Cheeto. Now, of course, it's Cheeto Vera, but to be fair, I've seen Cheeto Vera actually win fights with his grappling. And for Sanhagen to just dominate him on the ground early and mix it up, that's impressive. And because Sanhagen's probably been drilling submission defense for a long time, because he trains at altitude, because he's been, you know, grappling with a lot of solid fighters since his loss to Aljamain Sterling, I think he'll be able to stay calm, cool, and collected under those moments. And if there's anyone that is going to be prepared for the wildness of Umar Nurmagomedov on the feet, it's a rangy striker like Corey Sanhagen that has one of the better fight IQs in that division. You know what I mean? I would go as far as to say Corey Sanhagen is a top three fighter in that division. You know, I, I might want to put Piotr Jan in there because he beat Sanhagen, but it's kind of hard to talk about Jan as being a top three guy right now in that division just based on his recent fights. You know, Sanhagen's looked so goddamn good ever since the Jan fight as well. And we could see Sanhagen just go out here and show levels. It's a main event, a five-round fight. We don't know what Umar's cardio is like. I know a thing or two about Sanhagen's cardio. It's legit. It can hold up. As I said, he trains at altitude. You know what I mean? To be fair, he was getting a little bit tired against Cheeto in the fifth round, but that's because he was beating Cheeto's ass for five rounds. And he was expending a lot of energy in that fight, and he was mixing it up. But Sanhagen's way to win, I guess I'd like him to finish a guy like Corey. I don't think Sanhagen's going to go. I mean, I'm sorry, Umar's way to win. I think he has to finish Corey Sanhagen. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you're going to beat this man by decision. He's too crafty. He's too well-rounded. So the way in which Umar needs to win is by a submission, you know, or a KO. I don't think a KO is that likely because Sanhagen's got a granite chin. And I think Umar should try to mix it up and look for that submission. But I can't wait for this fight. And if Umar wins and O'Malley wins, then we get a Nurmagomedov and O'Malley title fight. And uh, I ain't the biggest O'Malley fan, but I am a pretty big Umar Nurmagomedov fan. I love his style. But if Sanhagen wins, he'll get a title shot and we'll all be happy because he'll finally get back to the belt. We just know how good he is and he's a fan favorite. So I'm just really excited for these fights. Max Holloway, Korean Zombie. 
it's going to be a classic Max Holloway performance. You know, we, we've seen some competitive Max Holloway fights recently, and it's been a while since we've seen a complete battering from him that'll go into the record books, but I'm pretty sure this might just be the next one. So, yeah. Until next time, I hope you guys enjoy the video.